It's year 11. Um, this afternoon in class, what I'd like to, to work on is solving um, or continuing to solve trigonometric, trigonometric equations, but this time looking at ones where we may need to factorize to um, help actually get us an answer. So if we look at um, this first question here, we see sine squared x minus sine of x minus 2 equals to 0. Um, much like earlier, you know, if we think back earlier, if I gave you, you know, 5x plus 2 equals 17, you would subtract 2 from both sides. Once you've done that, you get 5 of x equals 15. Once you've done that, then you're going to divide by 5. And you, you'd arrive at the answer that, you know, x equals 3. And that was fine. Then when we, we stepped up a little bit, like, you know, I gave you x squared plus 2 equals, um, hang on, let's not do that one, x squared plus 2x equals to, let's just say 0. All of a sudden you can't take 2x to one side, divide by x. Um, you could, but that would only give you one solution. Remember we talked about factorizing this and we'd have x outside of x plus 2 equals to 0. And in that case, you're multiplying two values together. And so then x would equal 0 or x plus 2 would equal 0 and then we'd get both our solutions and we go from there. When it comes to trig, it's sort of the same thing. We can see we can't, we've got sine squared and we have sine. We can't manipulate, um, there's no trig identities here that are going to help us make this question any easier. So the way we're going to tackle it is I'm going to make a substitution. I'm going to say, um, and I'll zoom this just back in a little bit, um, let u equal sine of x. Because if I let u equal sine of x, then sine squared x is just u squared. And like earlier, we well, the substitution, sine of x... Well, that's just going to be equal to u. If I was to replace that into my equation, I've all of a sudden got an equation that says solve u squared minus u minus 2 is equal to 0. And when we look at that one, we recognize that, well, that's a monic trinomial. And we know how to factorize that. We can factorize that quite comfortably. And once we factorized that, we knew how to then solve for u and tell when u would equal to zero. So we're going to do the exact same thing. So um, let's go through and, and solve. So factors of, well, if I look at my, my equation, I'm looking for factors of negative two that add together to give negative one. So... Um, let's go through here. Factors of, well, factors of negative 2 are going to be 1 and 2. Remembering one of them need to be negative. Since this u is negative, I know my highest factor is going to be negative. 1 minus 2 is minus 1. 1 times minus 2, negative 2. I'm happy. So I know they're going to be my factors. I know I've got plus 1 and I have minus 2. So instead of now writing u plus 1 and u minus 2, I'm just going to replace that with sine of x. So I know that sine of x plus 1 and sine of x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now when it comes to solving this equation, we know how to do that now. We know that our solution is going to be when sine of x plus 1 is equal to zero, or when <clears throat> sine of x minus two is equal to zero. They're gonna be out two times. So let's rearrange the left-hand side, the, uh, the left-hand one, so we know we can write that now as sine of x is equal to negative one. I can work with that. We rewrite this right-hand one, sine of x is equal to two, one thing that I noticed straight away here about this value 2, 
it's just normal sine of x. We know sine of x, normal sine of x, only goes between 1 and minus 1. They're the two values it bounces between. This says 2. So straight away, I know this one has no solution. So I'm just going to reject it. I'm not going to even bother solving it. There's no solution to solve for that one. So all my answers must come from when does sine of x equal to negative 1. Um, the other thing to remember right now, it's between minus 2 pi and 2 pi. So I want all my answers that are between minus 2 pi. So what I'm looking for is, if I was to rewrite this, between, minus, between 0, x, and 2 minus that's a lap this way. And then minus 2 pi is less than x, less than 0. Well, that's a lap back the other way around my unit circle. So I've got to think that I'm, good, I'm doing two laps here. All right. Let's think about this now. When is sine of x equal to negative 1? Sine of x equals negative 1. It's not one of our exact ratios. But it's what we call a boundary angle. Because when sine of x equals negative 1, remember that sine of x is just equal to our y-axis coordinate. And the only time that our y-axis is going to be exactly negative 1 is when that that point, that point on that unit circle comes down and meets the y-axis underneath there. So that's the only point. Now remembering our degrees are in radians. So that degree there is if I'm going my normal anti-clockwise shape, that's three pi on two. If I was going negative angles, that's negative pi on 2, negative 90 degrees or 270 degrees, they're the, you know, the same thing. And that's all our answers. We didn't actually have to worry about what quadrant because sine of negative 1 lies on the boundary between quadrants. So what we're going to end up saying is therefore x is equal to minus pi on 2 and 3 pi on 2. And if we notice that, they're just 360 degrees away from each other, those two solutions as well, two pi away from each other. That's it for question one. So question two here says, solve cot squared theta minus seven cot theta equals minus 12 for the domain minus 180 to 180. So I've got to be careful that one. And um, it's telling me here to round theta to the nearest degree. Now, that's interesting for me because it says round it to the nearest degree. So that way, straight, straight away, you're starting to tell me I'm not, probably not going to be dealing with exact ratios here because we know exact ratios are nice numbers, nice angles. If this is telling me to round, I'm probably going to have to use my calculator somewhere. So be careful because it's in degrees. That's in degrees. I need to make sure my calculator's in degrees. All right. If we have a look at this, the first thing I'm going to want to do here, they're both cot, which is okay, um, but I'm not seeing any trig identities coming up here because they're both exactly the same. I'm not seeing ones. But if I rewrite it like cot squared theta minus 7 cot theta plus 12 equals 0, I'm starting to see like something squared, a single term, a constant. I'm starting to see here that it's a monic trinomial. So it's a monic trinomial. So what we're going to do, I'm going to do the same thing that we did earlier. I'm going to let u equal cot theta. So what we end up with is then u squared minus 7u plus 12 is equal to 0. So let's roll on through this one. Well, the factors of 12, factors of 12 are 1, 12, 2, 6, 3, and 4. Having a look up here in my trinomial, because that sign is negative, my highest factor is negative, so that's got to be negative. Because my factor, the number I'm looking for is positive, the only way I can get a positive with a negative is if everything was negative. Minus 3 and minus 4 are my factors I'm looking for. So we would have u minus 3, u minus 4 equals 0, which ends up being, therefore, I have 10, oh, no, I have cot theta equals, uh, nope, what am I doing? 
cot of negative three, cot of negative four is equal to zero. Um, what I'm dealing with here now is I don't want to deal with cot. So I'm going to rewrite it to try and get rid of cot. Now I did say where possible, use sine and cosine earlier. But we're not dealing with trig identities here. We're dealing with trig uh, an equation. We can use some other facts we know about cot. So let's go through it. If we have cot of theta minus 3 is equal to 0, I can rewrite that as cot of theta is equal to 3. If cot of theta is equal to 3, that means, well, cot was just 1 on tan. 1 on tan of theta is equal to 3. In the exact same way on the other part of it, if cot of negative... Oh, cot theta of negative 4 is equal to 0, I can then rewrite that and we rework that so I can get 1 on tan theta is equal to 4. I'm just going to take the reciprocals of both sides. And what I mean by that is I'm just going to flip both both sides in both both questions here. So then I'm going to get the reciprocal of 1 on tan is tan on 1. So I'm just going to end up with tan of theta is equal to, and the reciprocal of 3 is just 1 over 3. And the reciprocal of 4 is just 1 over 4. So I'm going to use that to help find my related angle and go through and solve this question. So now we come up here for tan theta equals a third and for tan theta equals a quarter. Now before I go any further, the reason that I'm doing this is tan, we know tan is allowed to be any number. Um, except there are certain times where it's undefined, but it stretches to um, infinity and negative infinity. So I'm not rejecting any solution just yet um, until I identify if the, the angle that it gives me is actually one of those undefined numbers. So let's move on. Let's focus on tan theta equals a third. So just zooming in on this side for tan theta equals a third, um, what we would get our related angle would be tan of inverse, our inverse tan of a third. When we evaluate in a calculator, we're gonna get 18.43 dot, 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 dot. And rounding that to the nearest degree, I'm gonna get 18 degrees. Thinking about this, cause tan of theta was a third, it's, it's positive. So when is tan positive? Remember tan's positive in the first and third. Yeah, it does have the same shirts because that's dad. Oh. Okay. And that I do. There. All right. Can I do this, please? No, but Shh. I. Shh. Okay. Do. Three, two. Remembering because um, tan of a third, it was a positive a third, so tan is positive in those two quadrants. Remembering our domain, it's said between minus 180 and 180 degrees. So if we think about that, let's split it. Between 0 and 180 degrees is just anything that lies in the top half. So there's only going to be one solution between 0 and 180. And then for that negative part where we move backwards, again, there's only going to be one solution. So our solutions will be what happens in the first quadrant. And when we go in our reverse angle, remember it's negative. And that quadrant down there, when, when we reverse it, is 180 degrees minus our reference angle. Okay. And in the same way, we're going to do that with tan of a quarter. Again, we've got the exact same domains, the exact same movement patterns. The related angle is just going to be inverse tan of a quarter. And when we evaluate that one on our calculator, we get... 14.03 dot 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 so we're just going to round that to 14 degrees and again theta then will equal 14 degrees in that first quadrant and negative 180 degrees minus theta our related angle in that third quadrant because it was negative so 
Therefore, our solutions are going to be negative 166 degrees, because that's 180 minus 14, the negative version of that. We're going to have negative 162 degrees, which is the minusing of um, 18. We're going to have our normal 14 and our normal 18 degrees, and they're all the solutions to that question. Remembering with with um, trig equations, ones that reduce to quadratics, we, we've got to be careful of our domains when we're rolling forward, when we're rolling backwards. Uh, something I do want to show you just quickly before you get on with working at the task I gave you today. Um, on one note, as well as this video here, you'll notice that I've got um, a couple other videos for you. Um, this first video is this idea of reducing something to quadratics, but just looking at just some basic algebra, how it works just with basic algebra. These next two videos are Eddie doing an example um, very similar to what we've just done as well. So there's some extra resources there. The other thing then with the questions that I want you to do today, I've got this, this, this check solutions. So when we open it up, it's going to open up in Desmos for us. And when I open Desmos, what you can see is I've got this, and I've already got the, one of the first questions in there for you. So if I turn this graph on, um, here you can see, and one of the questions, this question asks you to solve between zero and two pi. So you can see I've graphed that equation. I've just literally typed that in. To type a power with some trigonometry, you literally type the trig function, and then straight away you put the power to it before you do then um, bracket x for argument's sake. Turn that one off, I don't need that one there for the moment. And you can see then this first equation here is graphed and I've got when does it equal zeros? And when I click on the curve, you can see it's gonna give me a gray point here where that curve crosses or intersects with the x-axis. So that solution there, it only had one answer where it crossed. So that would be the, the value we write. The, our answer for that one between zero and two pi would be just pi. Uh, for question B, which was the next question on that one, again, you can see from the way it's curved, it looks like it's only crossing at one spot and it's crossing at pi on two. So that's the spot that it's crossing our, our x-axis. So hopefully that you can use to help double check your answers as well as the solutions that I'll provide for you. Uh, any questions? Click me an email and I'll try and help you the best I can. Otherwise, have fun um, with doing those trig equations and our next lesson uh, will get cracking onto some 3D trigonometry.